My name is Willie Shooter, and I am a PV survivor. PV, for those of you who don't know what that means, is shorthand for Pentagus Vulgaris. Probably the ugliest name that they can name anything. So, obviously, PV works well, and <laughs> so from now on we refer to everything as PV. Um, I'm here today in my office with my therapist, uh, Cynthia, and it's a better suited environment for uh, the introductory video that I'm about to present. So, um, first question please. Dear, okay. You. How are you doing today? Well? I'm, I'm well. And that's kind of a loaded term, but well, I'm not sick. So okay. I can't really, I, I don't really know how to feel anymore. I don't know what normal is. I might feel normal. I might be normal today. I don't know. It. I've forgotten it. It's been so long. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're feeling uh, pretty normal today. You look good. Thank you. Okay. Question number one. When did you first notice when you were getting sick? My health began to decline in around 2008. Late summer I was working on Fort Bragg and there was a massive construction going on in their uh, Special Forces facilities because the entire Southern and Southern Command posts being built there and we were all there and it was top secret and all that kind of stuff. And it was long hours and I thought maybe some of this was exposure to something, some chemical or something. It was the blistering on my, my hands first. and it, insensitivity. Uh, my face still very red from all that. And it may be permanent even though I've been trying to treat it. Uh, the blisterings came and went. The uh, thrush would come and go. It would get worse sometimes. Start to get better at others. And some combinations like food had no taste. Milk had no taste. Anything. Coffee. Everything tasted like mush. It, I think mean, I could do is just turn back ice cold beer and I drink a lot of them. So I lived off beer and sunflower seeds for about two years. And uh, my weight and all that went down to my health. And I went to see a doctor one day. Okay. When were you first diagnosed with PB? I believe it was August 27th, 2000. Two thousand and twelve, late okay. summer. Okay. Um, I'd been laid off from my work because my health had gotten so bad. They were just tired of me, and he was wanting me to quit. He was a cheapskate, and he kind of tortured me in the last few months. But I had found a, an addiction to uh, Percocets and things I bought on the streets. I was trying to self-medicate myself out of whatever this was. I had no insurance. I had not seen a doctor in over twenty-two years. Okay. My dad took me to his because he had a very good insurance plan. He walks right in the door and looks at my arm. He says, Pimpicus Vulgaris. And he turned and sat down. And I was like, What did you say? And he told me, Pimpicus Vulgaris. He said, You got it. Cross the case. I said, well, You just walk in and tell all that's wrong with me. And he said, Hold on a minute. He made some notes. He turned around. He said, Um, they began to tell me about it. Okay. What was his name? Who was the, your dad's doctor? Dr. James Wallace. Uh -huh. inter Dillon Internal Medicine at uh, McLeod Medical Center in Dillon, South Carolina. Okay. He and is Dylan. excellent. He is, his daughter was interning there and he brought her and the other staff. He said, do you mind if they see this? Because they may never see a case of this again. Right. And I was like, okay, wow. And he began to tell me how rare it was. And then began to tell me um, some other things. And I stopped listening because they told me that it, it, it was a genetic, okay, it's thyroid based. Wow, I heard of that, okay. Um, he said it's uh, terminal. I said, terminal? He said, fatal. And I was like, uh, okay, and what's the medicine for? He said, it's incurable. Okay, well, what kind of meds were prescribed to you? First was prednisone. I was on 60 milligrams twice a day. That made a huge difference. Anyone that has pentagus, and most of us, 
have a very high success rate with prednisone, but we have to taper it down because it's a hormone, lot residual based, long term cause problems. Um, I've seen it actually cause psychosis in people that are still having to be on it for a long period of time. Now there's a lot of other medicines out there I can't put in say what's what and what's on thing. But the good thing about cure all is we can all share this information and we all grow very fast and we're gonna find this cure this year. Okay, was pre was prednisone the only medication that was prescribed to you? Initially. And it ran out. And because I didn't have insurance and I couldn't get the prescription refilled and my dad was very ill himself, I uh it had done wonders for me and I had and he told me, Dr. Watts told me and all that bad news, he said, I said, okay, well, if it's fatal, how long do I have? He said, I'd be surprised to see you walking in 30 days. And I was like, 30 days? I said, whatever happened to six months? Mm. It's always six months. He said, just the movie, it's just TV. He said, you got 30, 30 days. 30 days came and went on prison. Uh, for a while there, I was actually starting to feel like Spider-Man. I was climbing telephone poles and trees and stuff, just with the heck out of it. Pushed a 3,200 pound Jimmy uphill that was out of gas for over a mile and it stopped. I, I, I had, all of a sudden, I had new powers, but prison ran out and my health immediately crashed. Hmm. What was it like living with uh, PB since you were diagnosed? Miserable. I did like most people. Um, tried to hide it um, with long sleeves and gloves. Uh, I drove a tractor on a golf course because. I had worked in the golf course industry, and this place was close to home. I didn't pay for really anything. Um, but all I did was drive a big tractor all day and listen to music. And I had MP3, and so all I did was listen to music. And they allowed me to drink beer, so I had a cooler. Hmm. And so I would drink. As long as I didn't mess anything, I thought the golfers were all out there drinking. And I was, got to wear, buying an 18 pack every day. <laughs> Not enough. Um, okay. But, uh, well, but I I went right back into that and uh, my health immediately in November. I was in McLeod Medical Center in the, deal, in the ER. And the reason I went was because I was trying to get some prescription drugs. Awesome. I'm not thinking about my health anymore. I was just trying to think about the relief that I needed to get out of all this. Um, and then, you know, that didn't work. They uh, immediately looked at me and threw me and uh, pushed me right into surgery. And uh, I was out for two days when I woke up. Uh, I didn't feel anything. I felt really good. Okay, you know, these two blood good. pressure cuffs, like, doing my feet. And I was like, man, that feels really cool. I'm at the kid on the knees. And uh, then they told me that we had done lung surgery on you. Uh-huh. That uh, I had a collapsed lung. And the fluid was half the size of my lung cavity and compressed my lung. It had been going on for a while. Okay. And, and anyway, um, lung surgery, and they said I had some crazy readings. They sent me by ambulance to Florence Medical Center. And that's where I spent the next... Um, four, four and a half months in ICU there. It was, that was how long I Okay. Well, what, what, what does it mean for you find, what does it mean to you finding the cure? Finding the cure is getting rid of this. It's genetic. We're a harnessing gene number. We can make a rabbit go in the dark. We can certainly find the cure for this genetic somehow, if it is what it is. I, for one, turn myself to science and research, not, not that I'm going to die. My blood work and all that is free of charge, anybody willing to pay to get it. You pay for it and your shipping and whatever you need to do to collect it, I'm more than willing. I'm O positive, is my blood type. Universal donor. Okay. Um, when I was in Florence, uh, they didn't know what to do. They sent me there for specialists, and the specialists I saw were a bunch of arrogant old men who refused to believe anything other than their own pompous doctrine. Uh, the first one came in, and he was trailed by three students, busy taking notes, obviously, uh, students. And 
He was just real pompous, and I had made his type in college. And, and he's talking about I had meningitis. I said, no way, man. This is Pentecost vulgaris. He said, you don't have Pentecost vulgaris. Okay. It doesn't exist. Uh, I, said, I said, I said, I said, what do you mean it doesn't exist? Doc, I didn't show him this, but I had Dr. Walsh printed out for me 56 pages. 56 pages of Pentecost Vulgaris, the symptoms, okay. treatment, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I've got Pentecost Vulgaris. I've had all 100 symptoms. Do you want me to tell you? I was in a lot of train thing. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, it doesn't exist. The medical myth. We're trying to get it out of sex books now. So with that, you know, now I'm being treated with endodontics, and they stick me with a lot of medicines. Um, I'm almost convinced they dosed me up and got me confused to get a spinal tap, and I did. I refused, and they just kept saying, "You refused," and then they kept sending the guys in. Okay, we're here to get the dude's spinal tap. And I said, "I refused," but uh, there were some groggy days there. I mean, they started to medically experiment on me. Um, the meningitis suddenly overnight turned into tuberculosis, okay? They couldn't explain how uh, a nervous system disorder suddenly became a pulmonary disorder, and both of them are highly infectious. And you know, you don't understand your so and so count tuberculosis in the something million, and half of that's considered fatal. In fact, you're still alive is incredible. So they put me on some TB medicine, and that crashed. Or the meningitis medicine, I'm going to have seizures for the first time in my life. Seizures so severe. My body was already weak that my heart actually stopped and flatlined for four minutes. And they brought me back and they were about to give up. I was told that. That happened another time, also. Okay. So, um, well, it wasn't that. So they come back and they say, hey, you got AIDS. 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 Yeah, I said, I said, no, I don't. He's like, yeah, I said, listen, if you only have like a big hat back there and you're like picking, picking, you're not even close with that. He said, no, he did that bit again. Two million T count. One million, you're surprised that you're alive. You got poop, no, age, and I was too weak to throw anything, and I don't think anything you throw about. I wanted to hit that right smack in the face. I left there being treated for AIDS. So all those AIDS medicines and all that may have had something. So maybe there's some research uh, that needs to be done right in there. I've never had a, any of you that are being current with uh, PTSD right now. A lot of returning vets are with PTSD. Surprisingly, 50% of them are showing signs of having AIDS. So it's now AIDS-like symptoms. I had AIDS-like symptoms. Okay. I am now uh, free and clear HIV negative. No detectable traces. Unquote. I've been tested three times, all three confirmed. When I went from two million times, uh, T counts to that, I didn't suddenly cure AIDS. There's nothing miracle like that in me, but there is something in me that can cure Pentecost Volvaris. We need to find that. That's what the cure is. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for giving uh, me all of that information. I think we discussed it one time before. Yeah. When uh, you first came here, you were very depressed, and you seemed to be hopeless. And now, you know, after a few sessions, how, how many would you say? About six sessions? Our uh, accountant, I want to keep a score. <laughs> I don't want to keep a score. I don't like numbers. Anymore. Okay. It's, well, good. I think it's good when it's good. It's good. We had a good time, right? Right. We do. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say good night and goodbye to everyone. Um, anyway, so I'm now... Uh, Thank you, Dr. Abe, I'm the administrator for Cure All, and uh, any patient approval of memberships, uh, you can send through me. Um, my information will be available on the Cure All site. And um, I hope I've made it clear enough, and for those of you who are watching this, that we, I've talked to you that are scared to tell your story, just you know, email me or PM me or whatever, and I'll read your story for you. Thank you. We will find a cure.